You can live a long, happy life without knowing that the tip of the shoelace is called, um... Aglet. Doesn't matter. But you cannot live a long, happy life without knowing these 30 facts. In today's world, there's no time for fancy intros, so just like, subscribe, comment, enjoy the video. 30 cool facts about Phineas and Ferb, here they are. In Phineas and Ferb the movie across the second dimension, when Jeremy comes to rescue Candace in the second dimension, she is posed the same way Princess Leia was when she was captured in the Death Star in Star Wars A New Hope. Also Jeremy says, I'm Jeremy Johnson, I'm here to rescue you, just like Luke says, I'm Luke Skywalker, I'm here to rescue you. Number 2. Ferb's full first name is actually Ferbs. The first and only time somebody called him that in an episode is in Act 2 Age when Vanessa offered him a ride. This was confirmed years later by the show's co-creator Dan Poppenmeyer. How much time do you even save saying Ferb instead of Ferbs? So Candace, what is Ferb short for? I don't know. Number 3. The voice actor who's in charge of Paris Chattering Noise, Dee Bradley Baker, is also the voice of Daki Momo, Pinky the Chihuahua, and the giant floating baby head, and many more weird characters on Phineas and Ferb, but he also voices Klaus Heisler from American Dad, Momo and Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender. May I help you find something? The exit, perhaps? Number 4. The most times Candace referred to Linda as mom in an episode was in Phineas' birthday cliporama, by a total of 56 times. While Ferb called her mom only once throughout the entire series. Bye. Bye, Bye mom. Number 5. If you intend to watch every single episode of Phineas and Ferb in a row, it will take you exactly 2 days, 21 hours, and 56 minutes. But who's got that kind of time? Number 6. The language the Martians speak in the episode Unfair Science Fairy Ducks is a mix of weird noises and some reverse words, such as Pavenmeyer or Disney. And. Huh? Oh, okay, what the heck? Number 7. Every single episode of the show has had at least one musical number, with the exceptions of Roller Coaster, Lights Can This Action, The Lizard Whisperer, and Mommy Can You Hear Me. Some episodes, however, have more than one song. The movie Candace Against the Universe has the most, with a total of 12 new songs, while Across the Second Dimension comes second with 11 original songs. Both movies, though, also have a cut song, which would bring the total amount to 13 and 12 respectively. Number 8. Mitchell Musso, Jeremy's voice actor, provided the voice for Aang in Avatar The Last Airbender's unaired pilot. But once production began, the role was changed to Zack Tyler Eisen. It would have been so cool to see Jeremy as Aang and Kenneth as Katara. It would make sense. Let's do it again! Number 9. The song Curtain Call Time Spent Together is the longest one in the show, lasting about 4 minutes and 4 seconds. Summer Belongs to You comes second with a duration of 3 minutes and 46 seconds, while the shortest one is Victory Gum, which lasts about 1 second. Victory Gum! And the mind blowing part is that it took 3 people to write that one. Number 10. Even though the names given to Doofenshmirtz's inventions usually end in Inator, so far he has made 23 inventions that lack the Inator suffix. You didn't see that coming, did ya? My blow itself up, Inator! Number 11. The episode Ready for the Baddies, along with the accompanying episode The Flying Fishmonger, was taken off the air in the US because of the Baddies song contained in the episode, which was deemed plagiarism by a real life band that was actually called The Baddies. The two episodes were finally aired again in the United States around May of 2015. After about five years, they went unaired. Number 12. It stated in Phineas and Ferb's Quantum Boogaloo that in the future Stacy will become president of Uruguay. And this is pretty weird considering how it is established that a president must be a natural born citizen of the country or have been born to a Uruguayan citizen if born abroad. But it turns out, according to the show's co creator, Jeff Swampy Marsh, that they had a whole story in mind which explains that Stacy is able to become president of Uruguay by meeting the son of a diplomat from the country, moving there, and after changing several laws, becoming eligible for the presidency. She went through all the trouble for a job with no upsides. Gotta go, Stacy. Good luck with that llama legislation. Number 13. In the Mexican dub of the episode, Stacy's made president of Switzerland instead of Uruguay. Pero debe haber un lado bueno de ser presidenta de Suiza, ¿o no? Huh? Number 14. Love Handles bass player Bobby Fabulous is based on Bobby Gaylor, who's Buford's voice actor as well as a writer on the show. 
The other two members of the band, Danny and Swampy, are based on the creators of the show, Dan Papenmeyer and Jack Swampy Marsh. Oh, for heaven's sake, talk to the hand. Secretly, I'm very lonely. Number 15. Papenmeyer's favorite song to write was Summer Belongs to You. Well, for Swampy, it was the Brick song. It's fun. Now, who would buy a brick for a toy? Number 16. As revealed in the character commentary of the episode Plop Stars, Norm went out with the television for 12 months. And when a TV manages to get into a serious relationship before you do, it's time to take serious talk about your life, man. Wow, cut and deep, man. Number 17. According to Dan Powermeyer's tweet, Ferb was born on the 29th of February. Number 18. Linda is notable for being the very first and last female character to speak in the main series. Phineas, Barb, I'm gonna go pick up a few things. You boys stay out of trouble, okay? Hey, honey, I got pizzas. What happened to you? Number 19. Even though platypuses are anything but green, Puffin Mar colored Perry the platypus still green just because he thought it was cool. But after several years, quite recently actually, they found out that platypuses have a special kind of bioluminescence and in ultraviolet light they glow, you guessed it, green. Ah, Patty, the platypus, why are you green again? Is it because Dan was decades ahead of the scientific community? Isn't he adorable? Number 20. The Buck Trio featured in Doof 101 and the Alka Files was part of the original pitch of the show since the very beginning, but it was finally cut out in order to simplify the whole thing. It was for the best, I guess. Number 21. While Dan and Swampy were writing the lyrics of Perry's theme song, Swampy simply looked up platypus on the internet and Wikipedia said a semi aquatic egg laying mammal. Then, right away, Pop and Mario added of action. So you could say that the songs on the show literally write themselves. Well, yeah, that's all Wikipedia wrote, though Sue did the rest of the magic. Number 22. In the comics published in the Penis and Fur magazine, Perry's chattering noise was spelled as. Don't make me read that. While it was given as Giruru in the video games Phineas and Ferb and Phineas and Ferb read again. Now tell me in a comment how you would spell this. Number 23. The city of Danville, much like Springfield on The Simpsons, is not in a specific state, it's just wherever it needs to be for an episode. Plus, there are many states with a Danville in them, so any one of them can claim it. In general, the city will be a geographical anomaly as it is both near the ocean, yet within a short driving distance from Mount Rushmore. Number 24. The song I'm Linzana and I Wanna Have Fun can be heard in the background of 19 episodes of the series, most of the time being used as an elevator music or played in the mall. Did you ever notice that? I have no friends, so I have plenty of time to notice. <gasps> How can I only have four friends? And one of them's my mom! Number 25. Then Bob and Mark confirmed that the reason why Ferb has green hair and Lawrence doesn't is because the green hair gene that runs in the Fletcher family skips a generation. In fact, Ferb's grandpa, Reginald Fletcher, had green hair when he was younger. Oh, that sounds very exciting. Tell me about that. Number 26. The name Candace was a hereditary name given to ancient Ethiopian queens, who were also known as warrior queens due to their military skills and abilities on the battlefield. This is actually fitting for Candace's nature, as she always wants to be the one in charge, and she's almost never at peace with her brothers. Plus, she received the role of the ruler multiple times throughout the summer, becoming the Queen of the Beach, the Queen of Mars, the Queen of Giants, Ruda Bega Princess, the chosen one of Fibloot, she became the mayor of Danville for one day, and Princess of Drusselstein when she switched roles with Princess Baldegund. Even though the only thing she did with her unlimited power back then was running through gold coins barefoot. I'm a genius! <laughs> Number 27. In the Polish dub of the show, Candace's name is translated as Fretka, which also means ferret. Other names are translated too, Phineas is Fineash, Stacy is Tepa, Perry is Pepe, and Lufeschmerz is Dunderstitz. While Peter the Panda is Pupu Pampanda. <laughs> Number 28. If I had a nickel for every person from Perry's pet life who accidentally discovered him as a secret agent and unintentionally defeated Dr. Doofenshmirtz by getting covered in a substance that makes him look like a creature which is afraid, then I would have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Number 29. The boys didn't come up with a big idea and consequently build something on three occasions only, in the best lazy day ever, but necessary roughness and Candace gets busted. They never get to rest, but they won't be that energetic in their 20s. Trust me, that I know. And finally, number 30. 
At San Diego Comic Con in 2013, Pavel Mai revealed that he wrote that there's 104 days of summer vacation because he only expected the show to last 52 episodes, as most Disney Channel shows lasted at the time. And since there were two segments per episode, you get 104 segments, so 104 days of summer vacation, and boom! There you have it! Third of the most tire spinning, gear grinding, clash burning, backfiring, pin trading, red lining, overheating, throttle stomping facts about penis and perp. Now you can go on with your lives being much more cultured than before, you can go share this video and these facts with your friends who will feel miserable for not knowing them and will probably stop being friends with you afterwards. If you have no friends to begin with, that's even better, you save time. Let me know in the comments if you already knew some of these facts and more importantly if you know more of them. I might know many useless things about the show but I sure don't know them all. And now that we're done, let's um… uh… I got, got it! it! Let's go to the laundry mat and fill the dryers with cheese! No, no huh? Uh, okay, alright then, uh, then bye! Peace?